Mm -hmm. Hey everyone, Huggy here. Uh, Happy New Year. Uh, I figured today, um, kind of doing just like a, one of those things I've seen on the internet. Today is a, tw a 17 good things about 2017 video. Just to try and, you know, keep up the good feels. Yay! So anyway, this is not in any good order. And I just very roughly have... A bunch of stuff like chalk lined here. Nothing like this is not a good order of things by any means. But uh, I just figured I would just list 17 things that I li did like about this year. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Number one, uh, concerts. I actually did get to go to a, quite a few concerts this year, so that was nice. I had. Uh, money to go up to Phoenix. I had money to, you know, go to events here in town as well. I won tickets as well to a music festival back in March. Um, it was like a two-day thing, but I just won tickets for one day, and I only wanted to see half the band anyway. So it was it was an interesting thing. Like it was, I, I would say a half rock pop thing and a half punk metal thing and so you had two kind of different groups of people without a whole lot of overlap showing up but the idea was you know it'd be like oh the pop rock group would play and then the punky ska metal group would play and then kind of back and forth a little bit uh throughout the night and so that was the idea two different stages um that yeah, was dumb but it was free, and so I got to do that. And I actually got another friend in for free because of the, the ticket I had. So that was nice. Uh, that being said, I did get to go see one of my favorite bands, Thrice. Did I see them three times this year? That'd be hilarious. I mean, I know I saw them... Well, I can't remember when they actually came the first time to Tucson. It was either late last year or early this year in support of the new album. I can't remember which one it was, but... I know I've definitely seen him twice since the summer. No. Three times since the summer. So maybe it was four total. I don't know. Um, I saw them in June. No, July. July when they opened up for Rise Against and Deftones in Phoenix. I saw them in Tucson in October when they were here for Fall Ball as part of a group. Of stuff and then I saw them solo well as the main headliner in November again back in Phoenix Tempe so I've seen them at least three times this year and so I was happy about that uh, number two number two quiz stuff and so I am still a quiz master I still work for that company um, I'm still playing usually once a week with a bunch of awesome friends and people um, admittedly I've kind of got Two different groups of people that I play with sometimes. Mostly my main group is Thursday still, but I do have a side group. I feel semi-adulterous. What's that word? That's not the word. I feel like I'm cheating on people sometimes. But anyway, so you know, I try and play at least once a week still because that's the fun and I've enjoyed it for five years now. Um, you hit a five-year mark. It was a little crazy. Um, that being said, I did finally pick up a venue. Um, I started scorekeeping or just being the grader at one venue back in October. So I started been doing that for a couple months. And I just got word over email that I am getting my own venue starting in January, which will be nice. I have not hosted a venue uh, on a regular basis since November of 2016. Yeah, so it's been a while for that. So I'm looking forward to quiz stuff. You know, a little bit more paycheck, a little bit more stuff. I am nowhere close to the raise. Um, there is a tier level of, you know, like how much you have to do in order to get a raise in your pay. I am not even halfway there. Even though I've been there long, long term, like lengthwise, I'm doing pretty good. But actual, you know, working stuff, again, since I had a big lull there for most of the year, that really didn't change much. I'm just playing with things. All right, so that was number two. Number three, um, work stuff is going pretty well. Uh, semester wrapped up. Um, admittedly, the schedule is a little wonky. Has been for the last couple semesters. But when you have good students, it you know that is its own reward. 
And so, uh, definitely had some students last semester that made things worthwhile. Um, students over the summer that worked their butts off that made that worthwhile, as well as here in the fall semester, uh, especially with uh, my calculus students. They, a lot of them did a great job. And I was just kind of honored, really, to work with one class. Sorry, I'm just, I don't know why I'm failing with stuff. Um, I did have a really cool class this semester just because of the demographic, um, especially in a calculus class. 70% of the class was women. And so I have never had a class with that kind of skew before. Um, Performance-wise, they did just about the same as every other class, which I think is all the more awesome. All right, uh, number four, that one time on Rock Band 4. <laughs> so I, um, as you guys know, I, I, I stream on Twitch rarely and without regulation. But, you know, usually the uh, easiest thing for me to do is just play some Rock Band on stuff. Um <laughs> That being said, there was one night back in, I don't know what it was now, September, August, um, all the stars, re, you know, align magically, and there is a song that I have struggled on, I, uh, I'm not the greatest drummer by any means, but I'm a decent drummer, but there's one song that's like hardest level difficulty for drums, mostly because of a lot of uh, drum rolls and stuff like that. That normally, if I can get five stars, cool. If I can get the gold star, pfft, yeah, right. And then I did. By, the, you know, all the stars aligning and just magic lux and getting the right star powers and hitting the right notes. And that was, oh, that was, that, that felt like such a big personal achievement. Um, possibly my favorite video game achievement of the year. And so that was nice. Um, speaking of video games, number five, I don't know, I'm like, ah, I'm like, zombie, no, no zombies, zombies are still like 10 years ago, anyway, number five, the Switch, and so, admittedly, um, I lost my spring break to Zelda, uh, over this past semester, I've still been playing quite a bit of stuff on it. Um, that being said, I would say Zelda and or Zelda Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey, probably number two and number three of my favorite games of the year thus far. Um, I love looking at my logs and stuff, be like, how long have I played each game? Um, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, not including the DLC, 150 hours. Mario Odyssey so far only like 35, but still, you know, definitely a time commitment that I've been putting into that. Um, I also have a puzzle game, Pacross, that I spent 60 hours on, but I'm pretty sure half those times is when I would start to play it and then fall asleep, because admittedly, that's kind of a thing I've been doing this year is, like, I'll play Pacross stuff until I get sleepy. I mean, everybody does that, right? They play smart games to go to sleep. Me? All right. Um, number six... Amazing friends and just general awesome people. So I've already mentioned quiz people. I've already mentioned um, those groups of awesome, amazing people. And really, they're kind of, you know, it's not, again, this is not a very well-written list. You guys should be number one. I'm just saying. But uh, definitely got to do a lot of awesome things this year with amazing friends and people. And I remember when I was like, how many Christmas cards am I writing this year? How many Christmas cards am I writing this year? <gasps> That's a lot of Christmas cards that I'm writing this year. And so, you know, in a way I felt awesome to be able to do that. And plus I know there's more people that I haven't seen in a while that I'm going to see next week. And so it's like, yes, more people. All right. So that was a lot of fun. Um, number seven, uh, just kind of getting back to family stuff. Uh, I went with Cousin Revu to Cousin, oh, Cousin Revu to the Game on Expo in Phoenix this year. Admittedly, I think that's the only convention that we were able to go to. Um, definitely a growing gaming convention in Phoenix. I mean, two years ago it was at a hotel, and this year they already grew to the main convention center 
in Phoenix, which is awesome. Also a little bit, you know, like, oh my gosh, this place is all hurts now. But, you know, we didn't have a whole lot of money this year to go or to spend on stuff, but I did see a lot of cool things there. Um, we also just had, they had a lot of awesome experiences, you know, open play arcades, um, panels on different kinds of things. And so my favorite panel, um, that probably should be going back to this channel that I'm thinking about it, um, I think it's called like My Nintendo Story or something like that. But basically it's like storytelling through video games and, you know, the connections that video games bring to people and happiness and feelings and stuff. But, uh, you know, we went there. I just figured it would be kind of cool. Um, they were trying to give away a N64 with Donkey Kong 64. And I was like, okay, I'll try and go to that. Um, that being said, it was just awesome hearing everybody's stories about, you know, video games, not just Nintendo necessarily, but just video games and how they connected with friends and family and other people through those. And then, uh, Cousin Rebu did his story as well, which answered the story of what happened to his Game Gear, which was a question I had always wondered about. But, you know, and I definitely feel like I learned more about Cousin Rebu and we learned more about ourselves through video games. Yay! And so uh, I would love to go back to the Game On Expo again in next year. Uh, not sure when it's scheduled yet or what my schedule is going to be. I had to teach summer school uh, in the second half or I guess the last part of the summer session. So that definitely affected things a bit too, I think. Was I teaching during that time? I might have been. I think I was teaching during that time. So we just did a straight one day up and back kind of thing. And so we definitely could have expanded on that more. But the time that we spent there, it was fun. We saw um, Phil Moore, the dude from Nick Arcade. And so, you know, he was just giving some stories. And some people were like, yes! And yeah, it was a lot of fun. And I would love to do that again. Um, speaking of things that we love to do with people, um, number eight. Um, I would say... I don't know if it really qualifies as a video game. I mean, I guess it does. But I would say in the sense of personal versus social games, I guess I could put those in a different categories. But easily, uh, my favorite social game this year has definitely been the Jackbox Party Packs. Um, and so especially among my friends and I, uh, Trivia Murder Party from Jackbox 3, that is always a very intense one. You know, everyone's like stealing the bodies and trying to outsmart everybody else. And it's like, ah. and sometimes I win and sometimes I die. And sometimes everybody tries to kill me when it's the fighting round. <laughs> It's like, I should, have, I should have seen that coming. I was like, come on, guys, let's just all, you know, defend or grab money and stuff. And then they're like, no, kill match. Kill match. Fine. Um, little things. Uh, number nine, I did get a pay raise this year. Um, not a whole lot. I mean, it's like 10%, but still definitely helps with keeping ahead of management monies and things. Speaking of monies, number 10... Um, definitely, I'm trying to see if I've got my stuff nearby. The answer is no. Um, number 10, biggest investment I've made in, pro in quite a while. Uh, I bought my first car this year. So I bought Harvey. Um, I, you know, got a super low rate from the banks. I, you know, put in a good down payment. And so... I'm trying to pay that off as quickly as I can, uh, you know, like when I get a tax refund for both state and federal, that's all going to go straight towards Harvey. Um, try and pay that off as quickly as possible. You know, I got, I set up like a, what is a six year payment plan, less than 300 a month, but it's like, uh, I'd rather be paying zero dollars a month. Let's do that as quickly as possible, please. Um, and so financial wise, Things are doing all right. I've op I've got more credit open. I've got the car loan uh, with Harvey now. And so things are on that are looking good. Uh, I need to check on my optional retirement plan because I don't know how. I don't know how that do. I don't know how money's do. Um, I'm not ready for vesture yet. These are adulting things that I need to talk about with actual people who understand these things. And so coming from a family who's like, investing? 
What is that? We're like, ah, well, like you shove it under the the mattress and then you save it for later. Um, well, okay, so uh, definitely could use some financial help on that in the future, but I think things are going in a positive direction in that sense. Uh, so that was number ten, getting my first car. You know, he's green. He's um, not too big, not too small. You know, I was worried about getting, like, a, I didn't want to get, like, a full-fledged SUV kind of thing. And so I got one of those, like, crossover vehicles. And it's like, yay, you're just big enough that I don't hate you. <laughs> and so that was good. Uh, number 11. Um, so I mentioned earlier Zelda Mario, probably my number th uh, two and number three favorite games of the year. Number one... I'm hesitant to say this, but my favorite game that I've experienced at least this year was Night in the Woods. Uh, Night in the Woods is a, I guess technically it's a platformer, but it's more of a story-driven adventure game on different systems. So Steam, PlayStation, Xbox. But it's, you know, it's about 10 hours long, and so it's not nearly as intensive or anything like that like Mario or... Uh, Zelda War, but I loved the story so much in that game. There's little bits and pieces of it that I can easily relate to. Um, there are well-written characters that, again, for a 10-hour game, you'd be surprised how much you learn about some characters and how much you more you want to learn about characters. Um, so much so that, as you guys might remember, for Halloween, I actually dressed up as Angus the Bear. And so it was like, cool, I, like, you know, I'm not really a Halloween guy. I'm just like, eh, whatever, trick or treat, whatever, blah, humbug. <laughs> but um, that was, for legit reasons, the one day that I was able to walk out and about as a gay bear. All right, number 12. Um, this is definitely a newer thing and kind of a segue to the hi. Alright, um, and kind of a segue into our, the last one, which I'll get into, obviously, in a bit. Um, artsy stuff. So, I think I mentioned that I did a painting last week up there. I hung up my other ones from previous years as well. There's my Homestar Runner-esque self-portrait from 2004, something like that. But the other stuff that I've done more recently than that. Um, again, nothing like serious. Like I want to start mass producing these or selling them on Etsy or anything like that. But, you know, it's a thing that I, I kind of like doing. Um, obviously, it's a time commitment too. And so, uh, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll get back to this for number seven for the last bit as well. But it's definitely something I would look, I'm looking forward to for sure for next year. I did get a... Uh, paint kit for Christmas as well as one slightly one slightly used canvas and so I'm trying to figure out how to incorporate that kind of stuff um, number 13 and so admittedly I have not been watching Netflix I don't watch movies um, but the one thing that I have been watching a lot of are streams on things like Twitch. And so I've uh, definitely been following a few channels. I subscribed to my first channel this year. Uh, and I definitely like watching um, their replay videos uh, as well. And so that way I kind of keep track of that. Because obviously there's no way I can catch up with every single you know, episode that they upload, you know, especially if they upload two or three times a week, you know, and if it's like a work day or, you know, just things are not going my way. Schedule-wise, I can catch up on it later, all the same. And so, you know, it's definitely nice to, you know, uh, support people that you are fans of. And if you can help them out, that's awesome. And so, I'm doing that now. I am subscribing to a channel. Um, I would like to do more in the future, obviously. Um, starting to look at financial stuff again. We may or may not have to cut back on that, but we'll see soon enough. But that's where, admittedly, I've been spending a lot of time where it's like, oh, I just watched a guy play Mega Man X6 from beginning to end. Um, no, I did not go see uh, Thor Ragnarok. I saw Mega Man X6. Uh, 
I know it's not exactly the same thing, but yeah, I think you know what I mean. And so I've been enjoying that immensely. Uh, let's see here, number fourteen. Um, definitely a annual. Yawning. <laughs> Sorry. Number fourteen, definitely in, I guess, neo tradition. At least for me. Uh, one of my favorite things to do around holiday time now is I'm like waiting for uh, BBC broadcast of the big fat quiz of the year. And so obviously I don't have cable, I don't have streaming, I don't have uh, you know Netflix things kind of like that. But there is YouTube, and somebody usually <laughs> uploads it onto YouTube for legal or you know questionable purposes like that. But for now, I, I did see this year's episode. It was amazing. It was hilarious. I have loved watching these things, even if I don't get all the British humor. But, you know, that's fine. Uh, next one. Lots of first experiences this year, for sure. Um, this is the first time that I tried one of those escape room kind of things. Um, and admittedly, the first time we had, really didn't know what we were doing, and we kind of lucked our way into, you know, getting out with a few minutes to spare. Um, second time that we, we did one, we started off on a good pace, but then we kind of plateaued, and so we got stuck, and so on the thing, and I was like, oh, we should have gone back and looked at the other thing with the other thing, uh, but, you know, overall, I think we were doing a good job on that, huh? and they were saying that was a very hard room, and we were doing a good pace, until we kind of just plateaued, but, you know, that happens, and so that was a lot of fun, um, so I would like to do more of those in the future. Um, hopefully it goes well. Um, I need to see how much those cost to do with friends as well. So uh, see so your number next one, music. There's been a lot of good music this year. Um, admittedly, I am now learning most of my music through local community radio. And so, you know, and so, you know, there are artists and bands that I've Never really heard of much before, but I'm glad that people are still that people are playing them and getting word out on them. And it's you know definitely not a lot of mainstream stuff, which is fine. But definitely some enjoyable stuff that I found this year. Um, and so my top five songs, I made a little list for this somewhere. Here it is. All right, so of the what I would say are my top five songs of this year, I think. Maybe two of them actually came out this year. No, that one came out last year. And so I'm just looking at these. And I think only, legitimately only one of these actually came out this year. Um, but, you know, a lot of it is just when you're discovering music, too. And so I have a song from 1997 that I only discovered this year uh, for the first time. And it's like, oh, my gosh, this is an amazing, beautifully written song. I would totally do a you know, acoustic cover of it if I had a chance. But just so um, I've got everything written out here, um, in no particular order, is it no particular order? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, so no particular order. Um, Middle Kids, Edge of Town. Black Me Out by Against Me. Uh, Lone Digger by Caravan Palace. Sleepy Town by Jim White. That's the song from 1997 that I'm barely hearing about this year. And The Violence by Rise Against. That was a big song from the summer when I went to their concert. And then I will give two, um, I guess, honorable mentions. Um, not one that you can play for sure. Or definitely not play on a lot of radio. But there is um, a friend of mine and his life mantra. Pretty straightforward. You know, be nice to other people. Don't be a jerk. And so I just typed that in, that kind of thing, and popped up the song "Don't Be a Dick" by Bowling for Soup. Video is okay. It's you know, it's it's individually hand or animated, but the song itself isn't bad either. So that's kind of nice. But again, not the kind of thing you can really you know play too much because there's a lot of cursing in it. That being said, you know, so I mentioned my top five earlier. And probably my guilty pleasure song of the year, just for future blackmailing purposes, Hoodie by Hey Violet. <laughs> I don't know why I like that one, but I do. All right. That being said, last, uh, we are here, number 17. You can tell how much the sunlight has already shifted out here. Um, number 17 on this list of the 17 good things about 2017. 
this year is finally over. And so, admittedly, there's been a lot of crap, a lot of bull, and a lot of, you know, what is it? Just BS out there. But there's definitely a lot of, you know, some good things that happened this year. Video games, friends, music, some good directions on that. Uh, but and for next year, definitely some resolutions, and so this is kind of this was kind of my segue from earlier, like I mentioned before. So my New Year's resolutions, um, again, no particular order: paint more stuff, write more stuff, watch more movies, and take care of yourself. That's that's those are my four main resolutions. Um, as for the watch more movies thing. This is something that I did, I think it was like five or six years ago now, but a resolution that I did was, see if I can adjust the, so that way I'm not as blinded. Oh, but that's obfuscating. Obfuscation. There we go. That looks better. And so, uh, resolution that I'm going to look into again this year, again, this is, this, this, it's a little bit limited since I'm not a Netflix person, and I don't, I can't convince myself to get a Netflix account. I mean, I'm definitely one of the people who would rather just do it piecemeal. And so, my challenge for myself is going to be to watch 20 classic movies. And so, what I want to try and do is I want to get as many genres as possible. And so, I definitely want a varied list. Um,. I'm going to say for my purposes, classic means at least 15 years old. Um, if there's something more recent... Did I do that? Did I do 15? I might have done 10. I'm, I think I did 10 last time. So I might do that again. And so, 10 classic movies. And not just, you know, Sharknado versus the, you know, Walrus Empire kind of thing. Like, you know, actual, legit, good movies... That people pay money to go see on occasion and things like that. Um, and so I'll, I'll probably talk about this with my friends more so. But if you have recommendations on that, I definitely encourage that. And so I definitely want to hit, you know, a few classic genres. You know, um, mystery horror film. Uh, teenage coming of, coming of age teenage drama story kind of thing inspirational animals movie uh, <laughs> you know i definitely just want to hit all those major ones um international acclaimed film uh western you know so not so much just watching all the marvel movies from the last 10 years because no i'm not going to do that but <laughs> um definitely trying to you know definitely get more cultured i guess quote unquote cultured on things, um, and so I definitely am interested in that, and obviously that takes a lot of time and commitment too, because like I'm gonna watch a movie, you know, I'm not gonna watch somebody playing Mega Man again, but I like watching people play Mega Man. I don't know, whatever. Um, that being said, uh, happy 2017 being over. Uh, happy 2018 starting for you. Um, until next time, this is Augie saying later.